Once again, Starliner faced setbacks in its journey to lift off into space. Despite being on the cusp of its first crewed mission, unforeseen circumstances led to its postponement. The Starliner spacecraft mounted atop an Atlas V rocket stood poised at launch pad SLC-41, ready to embark on a historic flight. Amidst anticipation and well wishes, including a message of Godspeed from Elon Musk, two astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams awaited inside the Starliner capsule. Everything seemed set for the journey to the ISS to commence precisely at 10.34 p.m. However, just two hours before the scheduled launch, the attempt came to an abrupt halt. According to launch procedures, this marked the time when ULA would commence fuel loading into the rocket. This critical process typically begins approximately four hours before launch, with the Centaur 2 stage being loaded with 4,000 gallons of liquid oxygen. The cause of the scrub was identified as an issue with an oxygen relief valve on the Centaur stage on the Atlas V, as confirmed by NASA. Following this revelation, ULA issued a notice on X stating that ULA Launch Director Tom Heater III has made the decision to the launch team that launch operations will not continue tonight for Atlas V and Starliner. Following the scrub, fuel was unloaded from the rocket and teams are currently engaged in evaluating and rectifying the issues promptly. NASA further confirmed that the two astronauts have exited Starliner and will return to crew quarters. Subsequently, leaders from NASA, Boeing Space, and ULA convened a press conference to provide clarity on the situation. Further updates on this matter are forthcoming as the investigation progresses. It's understandable that the new schedule for this flight is of utmost interest to everyone. While both sides have yet to release any official information, the flight does have backup dates on May 7th, 10th, and on the 11th. In my opinion, resolving the fuel valve problem may indeed require some time, making the weekend dates more feasible. Do you agree? If so, let me know with a yes in the comments section. If not, let me know with a no, and please elaborate on your perspective. The recent incident has undoubtedly caused disappointment, but it's important to clarify that the issue lies with the launch vehicle rather than the Starliner itself. Valve errors are a common challenge across various vehicles, as acknowledged by Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, a competitor to Boeing's Starliner, who stated, anything with a state, change. Fuel valve systems are indeed critical components, particularly when dealing with cryogenic fuels like liquid oxygen, which can reach extremely low temperatures, such as negative 183 degrees Celsius or negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit. While Atlas V has a reputation for reliability, its launch frequency has diminished in recent years, resulting in fewer opportunities to test its systems in practical scenarios. This vulnerability isn't unique to Atlas V. Many vehicles encounter similar challenges. For instance, Starliner faced a delay in 2021 due to valve issues, and NASA's SLS rocket has been scrubbed multiple times for the same reason before launching the Artemis II mission. Even the Starship rocket and Falcon 9 slash Crew Dragon have experienced valve-related problems. When comparing Falcon 9 and Atlas V, I lean towards Falcon 9 as the more reliable choice at present. Falcon 9 has demonstrated reliability not only in launching Dragon, but also in numerous other missions, boasting high success rates, frequent launches, and extensive reuse capabilities. If Atlas V continues to experience issues, Boeing may need to consider using Falcon 9 for future Starliner launches. While this decision may pose challenges, it could ultimately prove beneficial for them in ensuring the reliability and success of their missions. The delay in Starliner's launch has undoubtedly incurred significant losses for Boeing, with more than 10 years passing since Boeing received the contract from NASA and seven years since the initially scheduled first crew launch, the prolonged delays have had various impacts on both Boeing and NASA's plans and budgets. Moreover, this delay has widened the gap between Starliner and its primary competitor, Dragon. Elon Musk recently drew comparisons between Starliner and SpaceX's vehicles, highlighting disparities in price and progress. He noted that SpaceX completed its missions four years earlier than Boeing, attributing the delay to what he perceived as an excess of non-technical managers at Boeing. In contrast, Dragon continues to build upon its impressive track record, having launched 13 crew missions, including both NASA and private missions, and 30 cargo missions. 
Musk's confidence in Dragon's capabilities was evident when he remarked, the world doesn't need another capsule, what matters is fully reusable rockets and spacecraft. Despite the recent setback, we maintain hope that NASA, Boeing Space, and ULA will swiftly resolve the issues to resume the mission promptly. Our collective aspiration is for the flight to proceed safely, accomplish all its objectives, and return the astronauts to Earth as planned. These endeavors contribute to sustaining human presence in space, advancing our exploration efforts. Please share this video to show your support for humanity's exploration endeavors. In related news concerning Starliner, Russia has recently made a notable decision regarding its participation in the capsule's flights. For some time, NASA and Roscosmos have had plans to exchange seats between commercial crew vehicles and Soyuz spacecraft for missions to the International Space Station. Since the Crew-5 mission in the fall of 2022, one seat on commercial crew missions has been designated for a Russian cosmonaut as part of a seat barter agreement reached in July of 2022 between NASA and Roscosmos. In return, a NASA astronaut receives a seat on Soyuz flights to the station, ensuring what NASA terms integrated crews, wherein there is always at least one American and one Russian on the ISS, mitigating the impact of any issues grounding either Soyuz or commercial crew vehicles. However, during the brief Briefing on May 3rd, NASA officials indicated that it was unlikely for a Russian cosmonaut to be assigned to Starliner 1. Dana Weigel, NASA ISS program manager, stated, We expect on the Roscosmos side, they're more likely to want to see a long duration flight also. So we think they'll want to start to fly with us on Starliner 2. The potential absence of a Russian cosmonaut on Starliner 1 would indeed disrupt the established pattern of seat exchanges between NASA and Roscosmos. Dana explained, We're still working through that with our Roscosmos counterparts. It's our desire to continue to do integrated crew, underscoring NASA's commitment to maintaining collaboration. She further noted that as of now, NASA and Roscosmos do not have an agreement in place for crew exchanges within the timeframe that encompasses Starliner 1. Once the demo flight proves successful and Starliner attains certification, NASA intends to alternate between that vehicle and Crew Dragon for ISS crew rotation missions. Boeing is contracted for six operational missions, which, following the alternating flight approach, will extend through 2030, coinciding with the scheduled retirement of the station. Moving on to China's remarkable mission to the moon on May 3rd, the country launched its complex and ambitious Chang'e 6 mission. A 57-meter-tall Long March 5 rocket lifted off from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center at 5.30 a.m. ETC carrying the roughly 8,200 kilogram Chang'e 6 spacecraft into orbit. This mission aims to collect the first ever samples from the far side of the moon, marking a significant milestone in lunar exploration. Chang'e 6 comprises a stack of four spacecraft, each assigned specific roles. The orbiter is responsible for guiding the mission into lunar orbit. Following this, a lander will detach and aim for a landing within the Apollo crater on the far side of the moon. Because the far side of the moon remains perpetually out of sight from Earth, a communications relay satellite, Chui Chiao 2, was launched by China in March into a specialized lunar orbit to facilitate communication between the ground and the lunar far side. Once on the lunar surface, the lander spacecraft will employ a drill and scoop to collect up to 2,000 grams of lunar samples, otherwise known as 2 kilograms reaching depths of up to 2 meters. These samples will then be loaded into an ascent vehicle and launched back into lunar orbit for a meticulously orchestrated and challenging rendezvous and docking with the orbiter. This intricate process is crucial for ensuring the successful retrieval of lunar samples and their safe return to Earth. Following the transfer of samples to a re-entry capsule, the ascender will be discarded and the orbiter will initiate the return journey to Earth. As the re-entry capsule approaches Earth, it will initially skip off the planet's atmosphere, aiding in its deceleration. Subsequently, the capsule will undergo a fiery descent through the atmosphere, culminating in a landing in Inner Mongolia. The success of this 53-day long mission holds the potential to revolutionize our understanding of both Earth and the Moon, as well as shed light on the history of the early solar system. Notably, this mission serves as a repurposed backup to the 2020 Chang'e 5 sample return mission, which achieved the remarkable feat of collecting the youngest samples to date from the near side of the moon. 
Furthermore, it builds upon the achievements of the Chang'e 4 mission, which successfully deployed a lander and rover on the lunar far side in 2019, marking significant milestones in lunar exploration. Chang'e 6 represents just one facet of China's expansive lunar ambitions. The nation has outlined plans for two subsequent missions targeting the south pole of the moon, Chang'e 7 in 2026, and Chang'e 8 around 2028. Looking even further ahead, China aims to launch its inaugural crewed lunar mission by the year 2030. China's intensified focus on lunar exploration underscores the escalating competition in the realm of space exploration. Now more than ever, I eagerly anticipate the strategic responses from NASA and SpaceX to this formidable challenger. The race is undeniably fierce and I encourage you to continue supporting SpaceX as well as the United States in this endeavor. Please show your support by liking and sharing the video to affirm our collective determination. Otherwise folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX and until next time, keep looking up.